is Melissa Pavon, and I'll talk about pembrolizumab treatment for progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. First of all, I'll explain the definition of this disease. Progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, also called PML, is an opportunistic, often fatal, infection of the central nervous system caused by the polyoma virus, JC. Antibodies to the JC virus can be found in approximately 50 to 60% of healthy adults. In cases of immunodeficiency, the virus can transform into a neurotropic virus causing PML with areas of demyelination. Let's just talk about PML. So I'll try to uh, uh, review uh, uh, a little bit about the virus, its epidemiology and risk factors, something on the pathogenesis and clinical presentation of PML, how, how we make the diagnosis, uh, and then just a couple of slides on treatment, prognosis, uh, PML iris, and some other rare JC virus-associated illnesses. A JC virus was named after the pers first person from whom the virus was, was, was pulled, John Cunningham, and that was the virus was identified in 1971. It is a polyomavirus, uh, 5 KB circular structure. Most of its genome uh, is devoted to the coding of structural proteins, but then there's a smaller regulatory segment that's highly variable and determines whether or not the virus is neurotropic. Most, uh, most of us are infected uh, primarily in childhood, and it's asymptomatic, and then the virus will reside in kidney, bone marrow, lymphoid tissue of healthy individuals, and a third of us will shed it in urine if we look by PCR, but it's unusual to find it in blood. The seroprevalence is uh, about 40% in the U.S. by the time you're a young adult and 65% uh, when, you, when you age. In Finland, uh, almost three-quarters of pregnant women are JC virus positive, and in Switzerland, about 70% of healthy blood donors uh, are positive. So viral isolates from the, uh, the pathogenesis is that viral isolates from the brains of people with PML include a lot of mutations and deletions, alterations of the regulatory region, and those are responsible for enhancing its replicative capacity and are probably involved in its uh, uh, neurotropism as well. The infection leads to a lytic infection of glial cells, and you need an intact uh, CTL response if you're going to control the virus and prevent PML. And in fact, in people who get PML and recover, uh, almost all of them uh, end up mounting a CTL response. Uh, those that can't do that uh, usually succumb to their, to their disease. So what about the epidemiology of PML? Well, before the HIV epidemic, it was a very rare infection. Really, we only saw it in people who were profoundly immunosuppressed, those with hematologic malignancies or transplant patients had a low incident rate of around 4 in 100,000. In the pre-ART uh, era, uh, up to 5% in some studies of HIV-infected patients eventually developed PML over the course of their illness. So kind of staggering numbers compared to the general population. In the United States, there's a study that was done uh, in the post-heart era uh, looking at 10,000 cases, not just in HIV-infected people, but 82% of those 10,000 cases occurred in HIV-infected patients with a smattering of diseases in people with other immunocompromising conditions. There are some new associations with PML, uh, and that is with natalizumab for, that's used, a uh, monoclonal antibody used for um, uh, uh, multiple sclerosis and Crohn's disease, rituximab for SLE, and then uh, I've never heard of Ephelizumab, uh, another monoclonal used for the treatment of psoriasis. Now applications in medicine. Cortese et al. tested the hypothesis that blockage of the PD-1 pathway with pembrolizumab, a downregulator of PD-1 expression, can renew anti-JC virus immune activity in patients with PML. Eight patients with PML were enrolled and all patients had different immunodeficiencies like chronic lymphatic leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, Hodgkin's lymphoma, and idiopathic. Uh, so clinically, PML, well, because it causes this patchy demyelination of the brain, it leads to al almost everyone with PML is going to have some focality on their neuro exam. Uh, and typically, patient will present with weakness, 
uh, sensory deficits, hemianopsia, incoordination, and aphasias. Seizures occur in 16% of patients, and behavioral, behavioral and cognitive dysfunction in almost half of patients. Unlike MS, the optic nerves and spinal cord are usually spared, and that can help in the uh, diagnosis. The radiographic findings are, as I mentioned, these uh, patchy white matter subcortical uh, uh, findings that are hyper intense on T2-weighted images of MRI scans. It can also involve the cerebe cerebellar uh, ped pedicles and basal ganglia and thalamus, but that's unusual. And there usually is not enhancement or edema associated with PML. Yes, with PML iris, but uh, with PML by itself, usually not. The differential, the radiographic differential, includes just HIV, nonspecific HIV, white matter changes, CMV, VZV, multiple sclerosis, vasculitis, and uh, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. The diagnosis, well, the definitive diagnosis requires a biopsy, and there is this classic triad of bizarre astrocytes, which can be seen here, these uh, uh, nuclear inclusions seen here, and then this is a, a larger view showing the demyelination that occurs that is typical of PML. So that's the classic triad. You can do in situ hybridization and pick up JC virus proteins, which stain dark here. And then if you're uh, lucky enough to have access to an electron microscope, you can actually see the virions replicating within glial cells. If you don't have a brain biopsy, then you have to make a presumptive diagnosis. And that's usually done based on the typical appearance, the typical MR scan appearance, uh, showing with or without gadolinium, showing these uh, T2-weighted images that are intensely positive in the subcortical regions, a CSF that is positive for JC virus by PCR, and then that, that's enough usually in most cases to make the diagnosis of PML. The CSF analysis usually has very few white cells, a mildly elevated protein, uh, but JC virus uh, is detectable in most patients by PCR. It depends what PCRs you're using, but the ultra-sensitive newer ones have a sensitivity that's over 95%. In, in the case that I presented, it was negative, uh, and some of the older uh, assays had a, had a sensitivity level that was only in the 70s. Uh, low copy numbers are seen in patients with iris, and, in the, and you can also find low copy numbers in, rarely in patients who don't even have PML. Patients received pembrolizumab every four to six weeks, up to a total of three doses. After pembrolizumab administration, downregulation of PD-1 was seen on lymphocytes in the blood and CSF of all eight patients. Five patients stabilized or showed improvement and reduction in CSF JC viral count was seen. Four out of these five patients showed persistent reduction of JC viral load and showed clinical stabilization with no recurrence of PML from 16 to 26 months later. MRI showed corresponding reduction in PML lesions, but no PML lesions disappeared fully. Three of eight patients had no positive response to pembrolizumab. One patient had already stabilized and two deteriorated and succumbed to PML. None of the patients developed iris, though. So treatment. Uh, unfortunately, there is no good treatment for PML. There's no proven antiviral therapy against JC virus. Uh, mirtazapine is often pulled out in people who are doing poorly because it binds to one of at least two receptors that JC virus uses to enter cells, the 5H2TA receptor. Uh, and there is this small study with an N of 25 where the survival rates were higher at a year in people who were treated with mirtazapine versus those who weren't. That was not statistically significant, I think, because the study only had 25 patients in it. And then there's some recent in vitro data that mefloquine, drug we use for parasitic infections, uh, has some in vitro activity against uh, PML, and there are currently a study, an international study that's ongoing, but there's no uh, results for that yet. Most of what we do when we try to treat PML is just improve the immune system. So if people are HIV infected, just put them on antiretroviral therapy. 
And if they're not, but are immunosuppressed for other reasons, see if you can back off of those treatments and allow them to mount a, a CTL response against uh, the Now, issue of light in Ecuador. Ecuador is an undeveloped country, as we all know, and a greater number of cases of PML are expected in this type of countries. 48-year-old male with history of HIV AIDS who presented to the ER with gradual decline in mental status. There is a confluent region of T1 hypointense and T2 flare hyperintense signal in the subcortical, periventricular, and deep white matter of the right frontal lobe. There is very minimal mass effect on the overlying cerebral cortical sulci, and there was no asymmetric effacement of the lateral ventricles. The signal abnormality extends via the genu and anterior body of the corpus callosum to involve the white matter of the left frontal region. On the T2-weighted images, there are scattered regions of cystic change within the lesion. There are no suspicious findings on the diffusion images or blood volume perfusion maps. There is no suspicious post-contrast enhancement. The imaging findings are most consistent with the diagnosis of progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, or PML for short. PML is a myelinating disease resulting from oligodendrocyte infection with the JC virus. PML is usually associated with an immunocompromised status, such as an HIV AIDS. Transplant patients and those with leukemia may also be affected. In AIDS, PML typically develops with CD4 counts below 50 to 100 cells per microliter. To conclude, in this study, five out of eight patients stabilized clinically, and four out of these five patients showed a persistent reduction of their viral count, which is an impressive result despite the small study size. An additional benefit is that none of these patients developed iris after their immune fu function improved, which was attributed to continuous low lymphocyte found in the respective patients. Prognosis, well, there are factors associated among HIV patients with, uh, with improved outcomes. Those are those patients with higher CD4 counts, those patients who have contrast enhancement on imaging studies, have a low JC virus uh, detected in their CSF, low being less than 100,000 copies. And if people have a detectable JC virus cytotoxic T cell response, that's not a clinical test, but a research test, then... Um, they have a more favorable prognosis. Outcomes in the Swiss cohort for uh, in the pre-heart era, the one-year mortality was quite high at uh, 82%. In the post-heart era, it's uh, uh, only 37%. And uh, the, of those people that do survive their illness, a third will be completely normal, and two-thirds will be left with some uh, neurologic deficit, sometimes quite severe. PML iris, so uh, PML iris might be present in uh, almost a quarter of patients who have PML and HIV. It uh, occurs, obviously, after the initiation of antiretroviral therapy. It can uh, be the initial presentation of PML in those that have, you know, maybe occult disease or before they were going to present uh, with neurological symptoms, or in people who already have PML and then their, symptom, their symptoms accelerate when they get started on antiretroviral therapy. The time frame for the development of PML iris is all over the map, as early as one week and as late as two years after starting uh, treatment in, in uh, a couple of case reports. Radiographically, the difference is that you'll see more contrast enhancement and more brain edema features that are not typical of PML without uh, PML iris. And JC virus by PCR in the CSF can be negative. You're mounting an immune response and controlling the HIV replication, so it makes sense that you might end up with undetectable JC virus in the CSF of individuals with PML iris. Histologically, the same uh, features that you see without iris, except now uh, you'll see infiltration with lymphocytes. Uh, and the treatment options uh, are quite anecdotal. There's just case reports about holding antiretroviral therapy. I found one case report of three patients uh, where ART therapy was held, and two of them uh, did better when that uh, was done. And then case reports, again, of steroids that were pulled off the shelf to treat PML iris. So nothing more than that.
And then there are some other rare uh, JC virus diseases besides classic PML. There's this granule cell neuronopathy, uh, infections of granule cells of the cerebellum. Don't ask me what granule cells are. I, I don't know. Uh, and it can occur with or without typical PML. Uh, it's, a, it's a diagnosis that's made by biopsy, and patients will present with cerebellar uh, dysfunction. But patients with classic PML can also present with cerebellar dysfunction. So I think this, this biopsy is really restricted to those that end up getting a biopsy of their cerebellum. JC virus encephalopathy is not something you'd expect because it's a white matter disease. It, shouldn't, it doesn't infect neurons, but there has been one case report of uh, an HIV-negative woman who presented with encephalopathy and seizures and was found to have infection of her, uh, of her neurons on biopsy. And then, again, case reports of uh, JC virus meningitis um, in a few patients who um, had a thorough examination and couldn't find another uh, viral explanation for their aseptic meningitis. So these are unusual diseases that you might encounter, but much more likely just the typical demyelinating disease that we see with classic uh, PML.